Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here. We recently had a viewer ask us, how do you collect retro video games on a budget? Well, in today's episode, we're gonna let you know how to keep those wallets fat and get all these wonderful yeah. toys. What are we drinking? Today we're drinking Double Dog by Flying Dog. It's a double IPA. That's a lot of dogs. You know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And sit back, relax, walk yourself a dog if you care to. And stay tuned to this episode of Gaming Off The Grid. Boom shakalaka! All right, Casey Rose, this one is for you. You asked us in our Is Retro Game Collecting Useless video, how to collect games as a college student on a budget. And I feel like we're kind of somewhat experts on this. A little bit. All of this has been obtained relatively cheap, and uh, we're sometimes making profit on things. So yes. anyway, we're going to tell you how to get it done. It is very important and I just want to start with the very first thing is know your shit. We already have a video about our garage sailing tips and that, so we're going to try offering up different advice from that video. If you want to check it out, we'll put it up here in the uh, corner of this video. But I think where you're going with this is there are a lot of times we will hear of somebody getting rid of a 360 that they say doesn't work, but we want that. Yeah, because the power, a, the power supply sells for 10 bucks. You know, if, if someone tells you that they have an Xbox that doesn't work, maybe there's a couple games and the controllers, there could be some value there. The hard drive, things yeah. like that. And then you got to get rid of stuff. So yes. what we find at garage sales and yard sales, and you maybe have seen on our socials, we post some things when we have big finds. Honestly, though, only 20% of that stuff probably we keep. Yeah. The you other want 80%? You want to sell 80% mm -hmm. of what you pick up. I know that sounds extreme, but if you are on a tight budget and you're going out and buying like a bunch of yeah. things, sell it, flip it, get your money back, get even more money than you did so then you can buy bigger things. Yeah. It is so crucial. It is absolutely crucial. And then the other thing that I think is important is, you know, I'm not really saying you need to lower your standards, but you got to learn how to turn shit into Shinola. Shit. Shinola. What I mean by that is recently, Robert got some free games at a convention that we went to. Some NES cartridges that were just ravaged. See, like some I, of the worst looking shit I've ever dude, seen. I just got excited because I was like, oh, free? I, I just started grabbing things. Yeah. I didn't even know. But then when we got back, I was like, okay, this game looks like crap. It's all dirty. The labels, P1. It's One just, of them had like hot glue all yeah, over it. Yeah, it was just a complete mess. And we were like, dude, this is... This is goes in the trash. And we, were, we opened it up and we looked at the board and the board was clean. And we were yeah. like, this isn't trash. We can fix this. We've got in our game cleaning kit some NES labels, back NES labels, NES cartridges or shells. And then all you gotta do is order a new label. You take the board out, put it in there. And you know, you can't flip something like yes, that. Yes, do not. If you have a game like that and you replace all that stuff, do not resell it. I want to make that highly important. Do yeah. not resell it because that is it's not lying. That is yeah. that is cheap. But for having it in your collection and putting it on the shelf, yeah. that is perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And to be able to breathe, the game in particular that we uh, we have done this with was Metroid and Battletoads. And super heavy yeah. hitters. And I got them for free. Yeah, got them for free. And we literally got a bundle of NES uh, replacement cartridges for... I can't even remember. It was dirt cheap, a, a dollar or two a cartridge, replacement labels a dollar or two, and boom. Son, you're gonna be all right. Another thing worth noting is there's a lot of disc-based games out there that you'll find that maybe you'll get disc only, so they're in like a CD wallet or whatever. Which kind of sucks. Anytime, you gotta play the long game here, so anytime you find good GameCube cases, PS2 cases, any disc-based cases, and even if the game's bad, keep the case. Yes. Because there's a lot of times we'll find a clean disc, you can get it at bottom of the barrel prices, and then you can reprint a label somewhere and put it in a good case. Now that goes back to do not resell it because it's not an authentic yes. label. It just is good for collecting, good for the shelf. I know it's not 100%, and there's going to be people out there that say, oh, that's not 100% the real thing. This is for people on a tight budget. Yes. You're not going to be able to go out and yep. buy freaking... Contra 3 of the Alien Wars on a tight budget. You just yep. can't. That game is super pricey. You yep. can't get it. But if you can find it messed up and fix the label, it's good as new. Kind of piggyback off that topic. You got to kind of learn the craft and learn how to clean and repair. 
You need to have a cleaning kit. You need to have yes. a repair kit. Can you fix an NES? That's probably where I would start. Fixing an NES is actually very, very simple. Super it's a simple. very simple machine to open up. It's a very simple machine to put a new pin set in. And then I think once you kind of figure out that machine and you feel comfortable, move on, move on. The Super Nintendo is not that much di more difficult if you know how to work on the NES. Some of the disc-based systems get a little difficult, um, but sometimes if the, if the system's bricked anyways, Get in there and mess around. Yeah, just, it's just, already failed. Yeah, you might as well yeah. just try it. And what's really cool, but going back to the NES, is a lot of people, their controllers stop working and they don't, they th they think they're fried and they get rid of them We've free. got free ones or We've a dollar. We've got so many NES controllers for free and all you have to do to fix them, 90% of the time, yeah, they, they might be fried, but 90% of the time, you just gotta repad them. Yep. That's all you have to do. You can get pad sets on the internet for super cheap, yep. and it's super easy to repad them. Anyone can do it, yep. and boom, you have a brand new NES controller. It feels freaking great, and you got it for dirt cheap or free, so that's badass. And, and I think I think a good, at least just because of this is how we kind of started, was fixing NES stuff. Yes. And once you do that, you know, then it's like, man, I can do this. And then you get the confidence to maybe tackle some of that more difficult stuff. You know, then when you get into the Super Nintendo, you have the shoulder buttons. And then, you know, we actually fix a GameCube controller. That was kind of fun because there's so many more moving parts there. So, um, but yeah, absolutely repadding controllers is, is clutch. Another thing I want to bring up is do not buy brand new. Say they release a brand new PS4 game. That's $60. And if you wait two months, it will be 40. Like yep. prices drop so quickly. Be patient. Don't buy a brand new. I know there's a lot of limited run stuff and like stuff that comes. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, I have to pull this right now. And yeah, you might have to do that. But if you're on a budget, that that might be stuff that you have to avoid. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, you know, to your point, we just got this really big PS4 lot with like eight games for like 23 bucks. You know, there are some games that you just want so bad you can't avoid it, but nine times out of 10, you really can avoid it if you try. Yes, you have to have discipline. You have to be patient. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a tight budget and you are really budgeting like, hey, I'm a video game collector, but I only have X amount of dollars to spend per month on video games. Just be disciplined and be like, this is what I'm going to spend on this month. And say you have a game that is coming out brand new in a couple months, maybe don't buy anything for those couple mm -hmm. months to save up for that. That's why you don't have to break your budget and you just gotta be smart and disciplined. I know it's a lot harder to do than it is to say, but it, it just applies, it and really does. So he's talking about monetary things, but how about where do you spend your time? Ooh, so good pull. In my humble opinion, and kind of what we've experienced, thrifting is dead. There is, especially for retro games. Now, if you're into movies and other things, it's okay. It's, it's awesome. But a lot of thrift stores, if you go in, you're gonna find a lot of disc-based games right now are $5 a piece. Or, no matter what the title is. Or higher. Thrifting is not what it used to be in most cases. And there, there are times though you can find deals on consoles and controllers thrifting, but it's usually not that great. So where do you allocate that time? Our best luck is at garage sales, and it's a freaking grind because you may hit 15 to 20 to and hit I a good have, deal. I have noticed recently that the thrifting analogy to video games is starting to apply to garage sales, which kind of sucks. People know that retro video game collecting is a thing now, so you'll go to a garage sale. We went to one recently, and all their games are $8 a piece. All of them. Yeah. $8 for, for like a 360, 360 games, game? Yeah. So with all that being said, it's kind of like, what are you looking for? If you're out there looking for some of the more retro stuff, it's gonna be kind of difficult. Difficult. But the reason there's this stack of games right here is all of these games were recently found at a garage sale for three for a dollar. Three for a dollar. We got all of these for four bucks. So pick your spots. Goes back to a lot of things we've said. Know your shit. Know what you can get on a budget right now. Right now, PS2, Nintendo Wii, PS3, and the Xbox 360. People are fire selling that stuff. They're just trying to get rid of it. Ask for deals. Leave your number and don't overpay. All of this right here, three for a dollar. Hopefully this helps anybody out there that may be in uh, Casey's situation and say, hey, I'm a college student and uh, I wanna collect games like you know some of these YouTubers and all that, but I don't know where to go. You gotta start there. It's just one of those things, we're really passionate about this and really glad that Casey, you asked the question. And anytime anybody that watches has a question, shoot it to us yes. because we are in a fortunate position right now where we can engage with everybody and it's really awesome. It's, it's so and awesome. And doing things like this are just so much fun for us and we get really jacked up about it. So Casey, thanks for posing Thank the question. So um, speaking of questions, 
This is another BK beer, the Flying Dog Double, double IPA. IPA. Double Dog IPA, right? Yes. yes. Flying Dog, Double Dog, there's dogs everywhere. Who let the dogs out? What BK do you, did. I want to know what you think about this one. This beer is a 12 percenter. It does not taste like it's 12 percent. As an IPA fan, I don't taste a lot of the hop. I don't taste a lot of the IPA. I know a lot of double and triple IPAs, you kind of lose the IPA taste. And I don't know why, because most people would think that it would come out even stronger. Yeah. This beer does have like a, there's like a roasted, like malty, kind of caramely taste to it. And it's it's really unique. I'm kind of confused by this, but I'm enjoying it. There's an element of this to me that I get why it's an IPA. I'm picking that out of there for sure. But it kind of reminds me of like one of those Scottish ales or something like yes, that. There's does. something Very about similar. this that it's is- the roasty. That's, yeah, that's what it is. I don't quite know how to explain it. It's highly enjoyable. And uh, once again, um, a lot of the beers that BK has recommended to us, they're almost confusing. They're good, but like, there's like, a lot it's of like, beers dude, like, what? I don't know how to really peg this one. I enjoy it. This is the second beer we've had from Flying Dog, and it's been pretty impressive. Oh, yeah, thus far, it's, but, it's been very good. And both of them were IPAs that were very unique. So it was the Tropical Bitch, I think we had yes, before. Yes, and then this one. They were both like in different ballparks, but they were both IPAs. and. Man, this is this is really cool, and like the color of this is like kind of dark and ambery, and it's like, hmm, this is a double IPA. Yeah, and for anybody watching, we've been on a heater lately, so we've been drinking a lot of beers that were recommended to us or given to us at Mo Game Con. So if anybody's watching and you're three or four episodes in, and you're like, they only say good things about beer, trust us, we do actually negatively review beers we've but just we, been given a lot of we've good been given so much good beer that we've been on a heater lately and it's great for us but just want to make sure you as a viewer know we don't always no, give positive we, reviews we so. drink plenty of bad beer yeah absolutely me. and we'll tell you about it when we do but right now it's just like it's like a holiday season because mo game con was really fruitful for us it was bad our friends took care of us big time so anyways you can collect games on a budget. You can go after retro games on a budget. There are a ton of other channels that if you are not into, you should check out on this topic. One that comes right off the top is, is Pixel Games. Oh, dude, they find so many amazing games yeah. on a budget and they say retail price, what they got it for. And, and if you notice, they know the market, right? So like right now, uh, Riff is really into like Xbox and the Wii U, I believe. And those are, the reason he's into those is because yes, he likes playing those games, but he knows it's low hanging fruit. Yeah, and you gotta know your shit. If you get up early and you put in the time and the effort and you learn the craft of game collecting, there is no doubt in my mind that you can be a successful game hunter and retro game hunter, hands down. I also wanna add that September is Children's Cancer Awareness Month and we are raising money to donate to a local charity, Children's Cancer Connection. Any money we get from our live streams, any money we get from our merchandise sales, we are gonna donate to Children's Cancer Connection and it is super important to us. Yes, and I mean, let's just be honest, you know you would look good in some of that God G sweat. Yeah, you would. So anyways, we always appreciate you tuning in and subscribing to the channel. Keep gaming, keep drinking, and get out and find some games. They're out there. Don't let them go to landfills. Put them in your collection. We'll see you next time right here on Gaming Off The Grid. Hey friends, Gaming Off The Grid here. <laughs> friends? <laughs> They're not our friends. <laughs> oh, shoot. I wish they were. And sit back, relax, walk yourself a dog if you care to, and stay tuned to this episode of Gaming Off The Grid. It's fucking funny. Did we get it? I think we did. I was trying to start out of the lab when he said, walk yourself a dog if you could. <laughs>